All right. So I keep getting complaints from my mom in this house that the garage smells like gas, but I can't find any gas pedals on the ground. But this car sure as shit smells like gas, so today I'm gonna find the gas leak. I was uh, reading into if the charcoal canister goes bad, that can start leaking and you smell gas. So I'm gonna remove that just for fucks really, and I wanna see you kids argue in the comments why I shouldn't do it. Uh, this car's emissions exempt in my state anyway, being 26 years old, so I don't care. And I'm probably going to end up taking it out when I put a turbo on this at some point anyway. So it's going to come out and you kids are going to fight about it and I'm going to laugh my ass off. So let's get to it. So this is going to be really quick because it's just all vacuum lines and gas vapor lines. Um, so I'll start pulling shit apart. So here's the vacuum line. It goes from the intake manifold to the little purge solenoid over here. He's gone. Shouldn't do that on the exhaust, but you get the idea. Now I'm gonna have an intake leak, so I'll have to think about something, find our cap or whatever. I'm gonna take this hose off the charcoal canister. Hey, I got an idea. I'm gonna solve my intake leak before I go any farther. As ugly as this looks, but there you go. No more intake leak. Done. Did. I'll keep this over here in case I need it later. One hose clamp on top of this thing. Let's so pull this off. This little clamp, plastic clamp thing. I'm gonna save this part because I have to uh, loop the. Well, this basically runs from the gas tank through this and then back for emissions reasons so I couldn't explain really. This thing's just slides out now, pops up. There's one hole in the bottom of it. <clears throat> like that. My uh, charcoal canister's out, so that's meant. And I'm gonna show you with a better view what you have to do with the lines down here for the e -vap, for the vapor lines. So this is your in I guess or whatever. This is your vapor line that goes from, from the gas tank, and then this is the bottom one that goes to the gas tank. I don't know the direction, doesn't matter. But basically we're just going to take this line and loop it. The bottom line is like, the barb is kind of bigger, but you can just slide the hose over, it's not going to care. So I have my hose clamp on there. Hose clamp's not going to work because it's made for a bigger, it's made for this, uh, this hose is smaller than that, but whatever. So there, bam, charcoal canister deleted, done did. And you leave this plugged in because you'll get an error, uh, check engine light if you unplug it probably. So leave it plugged in, it's not going to care. It's just going to click away as usual and do nothing. But magically, I actually discovered where my leak is while doing this. So, it smelled like gas, so I was checking my injectors. That one looks happy. That one looks happy. That one looks happy, and this one... This one uh, is a little wet. It's a little wet. I don't know if you can see it in there, but that one's leaking. I had the car running uh, a second ago and I actually figured out it was leaking, so... That's what's leaking. I actually do have a O-ring kit for you inject all the injectors, so I'm just gonna pull, pop the fuel rail off. Change just that one's O-rings and call it a day. Before I pop the fuel rail off, we're gonna play this fun game of having your wiper motor plug in the way of your fuse box. Dick. And pull your fuel injector relay. Start the car and let it die. Or just not start at all, that'll work too. Probably the, all the fuel pressure is leaking out from where that injector was, so. That'll also do, but safety first. Keep this shit 
if, for, if you ever decide you need it. And now I'm gonna unbolt the fuel rail. All right, step one is to get some shit out of your way. First thing will be the PCV line, because it's just irritating. And you're not gonna be able to pop the fuel rail off with it right there. So pop this line off. It's helping out with these clamps that never stay real tight. So you can slide them off by hand. Then we're gonna take the idle speed control valve off. I'm not sure, don't confuse that with the electronic valve under the throttle body that actually controls, electronically controls your uh, idle speed. This controls basically your cold start idle um, because it's thermally controlled. These lines have coolant going through them and when it gets hot enough it closes or I'm not 100% sure but it, uh, it keeps, it lets you idle higher when your engine's cold. So I would not recommend disconnecting these lines unless your block is not full of coolant. So that's what you have to do. But this thing's in your way of the fuel rail, so you gotta take it off. And it's four eight millimeters. And you have to try really hard not to strip out. They actually have Phillips head tips on them. Uh, Phillips slots, I guess, in them. So you could do that too. Wow, uh, just rounded the fuck out. Well, that's a cunt. I'm gonna have to figure out how to get that up now. Holding them bolts, never fun. My ingenuity since uh, the thing stripped out, the bolt head stripped out. They all have a Phillips t uh, head in them too, though. So, so I didn't have any like flat ratchet or any short stubby 90 screwdriver that would fit in there. So I took the right size tip, it's like a number three Phillips bit, took a quarter inch tiny little wrench, slid the box, uh, the other end over at the knot box end. Stuck my, wedged my needle nose in there to push it in. And with enough leverage, I actually, I can't do it with two hands now, but I did break it loose. See? <laughs> so, that's what I have to deal with. This is whenever I try to do a simple task, something. It always turns into a way bigger problem, mess, whatever. But uh, now I can continue. Awesome. So I'm going to take this rounded out one and put it in one of the top spots. With a bolt that looks way better. So I don't have to deal with that pain in the ass again. Cool. Alright, fuel rail. So now, next step, unplug all your injectors. Because I can't get my thumb lightly and then pull it out. Just connect the line for my fuel pressure regulator. Now, fuel rail is held on by two 12s. Try your best not to snap them, because then you're going to need a whole new intake manifold. Here's something to be very careful about. When you pull the injectors out, there's a little uh, rubber grommet on the bottom that sits in the intake manifold, and that tends to pop out, and then you lose it and you're fucked. And there's also one at the top of each injector into the rail. And also, uh, don't lose these little black spaces that go between the fuel rail and the intake manifold. Since I already know which one's leaking, I'm not going to take the whole fuel rail out. I'm just going to pop that one injector out. Because to take the whole fuel rail off, you'd have to disconnect the lines. You know, it's just kind of a pain in the ass. So, I mean, it's not really, but it's going to make a mess, and I don't feel like it. Alright, so took the injector out, and right here we can see the cause of the leak. This fucking thing will focus. There it is. The, no. Had it. Come on. Almost. Fucker. Anyway, there it is. The top. Right there. 
the top o-ring is split and that's what's causing it to leak right out of the fuel rail so I'm gonna go ahead and replace all the little bushings and stuff on this one so here's what I cleaned it a little bit cleaned all the gunk and shit off of it these are the old split o-rings so this is what comes in your nice little kit when you buy a replacement for these you get, uh, you get all three little grommets So this little fatter one so that goes on the bottom replaces this little rib token guy then the one with the little slit in the or ridge in the middle goes on the top of the injector and your o-ring Put right on top of the other, this part of the injector. Be careful you don't split it when you're doing this part either. Just like that. Bam. And I cleaned it up, wiped it off all the grime and shit. So I'm gonna throw this back in, hopefully it doesn't leak. Alright, so I got all the gas soaked up. So I don't have any liquid gas floating around. It evaporates pretty quickly, so doesn't pose that big of a danger unless you give it an ignition source so don't do that don't smoke when you work on cars so I'm going to pop this injector back in because you just kind of got to wiggle them around until they sit where you want them now you just have to do the fun part getting all the injectors lined up put those little spacers back in here first. So now you play the fun game of getting all the injectors to line up all at once. And get the fuel rail on there. Actually, give them a little wiggle once they're in there. Started. So I'll pop out. Fuel rail on there, kind of tight. I don't want to go overkill with these because, like I said, if you snap them, you're so fucked. Like that. Plug all your injectors back in. Plug them all back in. The pressure regulator vacuum back up. Third PCV line back on there. Now your idle valve. And I moved that stripped out one to the top so I can have an easier time getting that on and off. Real easy when you tighten them up. Strip them out now. Alright. Clean up all your nonsense around here. Fuel pump relay back, which I already did. Reconnect all your fuel lines. I took one off to drain the gas out of it. And then you're gonna start it up and immediately check for any leaks. And I don't see any gas pissing out anywhere. It looks like we're good. Alright, that's that. Good shit.